Good morning, church. I'll be reading Romans 8, verses 38 to 39. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death or, nor life, neither angels or demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God. That is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. God bless. the king of my heart be the mountain where I run the fountain I drink from oh he is my song let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide the ransom for my life oh he is my song you are good, you're good, oh, you are good, you're good, oh, you are good, you're good, oh, you are good, you're good. The king of my heart be the wind inside my sail, the anchor in the waves. Oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins, the echo of my days. Oh, he is. Let the King of my heart be the wind inside my sail, the anchor in the waves. Oh, He is my song. Let the King of my heart be the fire inside my veins, the echo of my days. Oh, He is my song. So I'll go. Good. Oh, you are good. You're good. Oh, you are good. Good. Oh, you are good. You're good. Oh, you're never gonna let. You're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let. You're never gonna let me down. Never gonna, never gonna let. You're never gonna let me down. You're. Never 
This world has nothing for me. This world has nothing for me. I need you, Jesus, to come to my rescue. Where else can I go? There's no other name but which I am saying. Capture me with this. I will follow Greetings again, Agape Church. We're delighted to bring the Word of God to you. And we pray that the Spirit of the Lord uh, comes and speaks to us through this message today. Now, I had mentioned previously that we're going to start a series uh, through the parables that Jesus told. Now, the parables uh, are principles that il illustrate the kingdom of God. That is, if you want to know about the kingdom of God and how it conducts itself and, and so on, you'll find those basic concepts in the parables. And uh, today we come to our second parable that we want to mention, and it's the parable of the great banquet. Now, we're going to teach about eight or twelve, eight or ten of these uh, parables, not in any particular order, though Jesus told them in a certain order. We're going to speak the ones that speak to us so that we might uh, be a blessing to you. Today's uh, message, today's parable, has to do with the parable of the great banquet in Luke chapter 24. Now remember that uh, in the Bible, we find our Lord teaching lessons over and over again at uh, meals, at dinners or banquets. Uh, he had a meal at Peter's house when he healed uh, his mother. Then he also uh, had a dinner at Matthew Levi's the house after he had been called to be a disciple. He went to Simon the leper's home. Now the lepers had to make special arrangements, but he went to a banquet there. He, uh, in today's case, he goes to uh, a leader of the Pharisees, a very well-known man, a very prestigious situation, who, and Jesus has been invited and he goes. There are many guests. And then there's the, of course, the great banquet or the great dinner we call the Lord's Supper, when on the night of his betrayal, uh, they met in the upper room and he established the new covenant or he talked about it in his blood. Now, today's parable is the story of the banquet that Jesus had told at the house of the uh, leading Pharisee. Now, we're going to read it now, so we'll get its context and we'll talk about it. Luke chapter 14, verses 15 through 24. And when one of those who were reclining at the table with him heard this, he said to him, Blessed is everyone who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. But Jesus said to him, A certain man was giving a big dinner, and he invited many. And at the dinner hour, he sent his slave to say to those who had been invited, Come, for everything is ready now. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first one said to him, I have bought a piece of land, and I need to go out and look at it. Please consider me excused. And another one said, I have bought five yoke of oxen. I'm going to try them out. Please consider me excused. And another one said, I have married a wife, and for that reason I cannot come. And the slave came back and reported this to his master. Then the head of the household became angry and said to his slave, Go out at once into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in here the poor and crippled, the blind and the lame. And the master the slave said to the master, Master, 
what you have commanded has been done, and still there is room. And the master said to the slave, Go to the highways, and to the hedges, the byways, and compel them to come in, that my house may be full. For I tell you, none of those men who were invited shall taste of my dinner. Now let me set some background about this uh, dinner uh, and the, the story that our Lord Jesus tells them. In those days when a, uh, a great banquet was going to be given by a, a wealthy man or a leader, a king of some sort, what would happen was he would take his servants or slaves and send them out to talk to the people, the invitees, and give them the invitations. Please come, my master is giving a great dinner, and usually it was three or four weeks in advance. Because you see, remember, they had no refrigeration and they just couldn't throw something together very quickly. So it'd take days and weeks to slaughter the animals, to obtain the wine or the drinks, to set up the banquet hall, maybe, maybe even whitewash walls, to clean the yards. Uh, as I said, slaughter the animals and cook them, maybe cows and goats and sheep and so on. So it would take quite a process for a banquet of this size, of this nature, to take place. So the master would send out invitations to people saying, please come to my banquet and give them an approximate time, say three or four weeks away. Well, the people knew and they would respond, kind of like a, what we would call an RSV. Yes, I will come. And so the servant would go back and tell the master that he, the invitations are out there, approximately how many would come and so on. And so then the uh, preparations for the banquet would begin. Now, the preparation of the banquet would include things like uh, the facilities, I've, uh, as I've already mentioned, slaughtering the animals, preparing them, and cooking them just right so that it would be a very delicious uh, vegetation or vegetables and the like had to be gained and prepared and remember again they had no refrigeration so it had to be prepared in certain ways so it would be ready for the exact moment or the, the day that the banquet would uh, happen. Finally when all was ready the master would say to the servant okay now go out and call those invited people to come. So the servant would go back to the same people around the village and maybe the area city and invite people to come. Now is the time. All the preparations are made. The master is ready. Please come now. Well, of course, remember in those days that it were, they were not the great cities like we have today. Uh, Tokyo or Mexico City or Fresno or places like that. No, the villages were fairly small with just a few hundred people, maybe a thousand or so, and they could actually walk in a matter of minutes, to a half an hour, to the banquet, to the, to the place where the banquet was being given. So now the servant would go out in the morning and tell the people, now the banquet is ready, please start coming. So they would make preparation and come toward the evening. But as the servant, Jesus tells the parable of how the servant does all this, the master does all this, and now the day has come for the dinner. The servant at the master's command goes out, and then he begins to invite the people. Now our Lord gives the illustration of people who would not come. In this case, three excuses. The first excuse when the servant came and said, the banquet is ready, knock, knock, now's the time. This invitee who had already said he would come says, no, I have bought a piece of land and I will not come. The servant is shocked, actually stunned. Because you see, as I mentioned already, or as I will mention again, if you said, yes, I'm coming to a banquet, and you didn't come, it was a great insult. It was like a slap in the face of the one who invited you. It was, these were fighting words. And in fact, some people did break out into wars over such denial or excuses. Now the servant knew that many other people were involved. Maybe the master wouldn't miss this particular one, but he was stunned and shocked. 
because the excuse was so flimsy. I bought a piece of land, I must go see it. Well, who in the world would buy land without already seeing it? And not only that, he could go to the bank and come back, and if he hadn't seen it, he could still go and see the purchase. It was clear this was a rejection of the master's invitation and a serious insult to the one who invited them. Now Jesus talks about a one who gives a second excuse, and that is this. I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I must go try them out. Now usually, if a man had one set of oxen, that is two, that would pull the fields and so on, he was actually on the wealthier side. But this fellow had five sets of oxen that he had bought, quite a price. And so who would try out oxen after they bought them? They would try them beforehand to see that they could work, see that they were worth the value. And so it became obvious to the servant, the one who was inviting, uh, the invitee, that it was a very poor excuse. Again, not a reason. They were not sick to death. They were not crippled. An accident did not happen, no. He had bought five yoke of oxen and said he wanted to go to try them. Again, this was a terrible, terrible insult and a rejection of the friendship, a rejection of the kindness, a rejection of the goodness of the master who had invited him. This, in fact, was a rejection of the relationship that the fellow had with the master. No, I'm not coming. Now, remember, he had already said, by the previous invitation, he would come. But now, a few weeks later, he was saying, no, I'm not coming. Wow, the servant was taken aback. But there were many others he had to go to. And so finally, he goes to another one. And Jesus tells us what happens there. The third excuse is, I have married a wife, and I'm not coming. What? Well, to marry a wife is a great thing. But the man could have brought his wife to the banquet, and he could have shown her to the people how proud he was of his wife. He could have introduced her to the, to the master, and the master would be blessed. So this was a great opportunity to show his marriage, to show his blessing, to introduce his wife to the community and the like. But instead, he said, no, I'm not coming. Now, there was a law in the Old Testament that said that a man who was married was excused from uh, military and other types of responsibilities, but not his friendships. You see, the master had gone to all this preparation, made the building beautiful, the, strong, the food and all the, and now this fellow was re again insulting the master, rejecting the friendship and the relationship, and showing that he would not come. So the servant is really taken back, but he goes to the master and reports the story. Master, I've done what you've said. I gave out all those invitations, and now today I went and invited the people to come because the, everything is ready. But I have found that several have made excuses. He may have even told them the three excuses that we mentioned. And so the master, when he hears that his invitation has been rejected, that the relationship is broken, that it's a slap in his face, he's angry. He gets upset. All this food is stuff that he has made. Much of it will go to waste because these people are not taking the uh, invitation seriously. Much of what he prepared, the blessing he prepared for them, will be denied and wasted. So what happens is this. The master tells the servant, go out to the highways and byways and hedges and so on and invite the people to come in. And the master servant had been a wise person, so he knew that with these invitations that, that the people didn't come. So he invited a number of people to come to fill in the banquet hall. So the, and he knew the generosity of the master, the kindness of the master, it would be fine. And so he said, sir, uh, what you've said, don't command me, I've already done. Well, then go into the highways and hedges. 
That means go to the poor and the blind and those who were strangers and had no relationship with them at all. Uh, they, people who were homeless virtually, bring them. It's called the Amharits, the people of the earth in the ancient language. Bring the people of the earth in and my banquet needs to be filled. And so the servant did, went out beyond the normal borders, not just the people of the village, but the people out in the countryside and people around and maybe even certain kinds of ones sick and come, the lame and the poor, the rejected, the scum of the earth almost. And now the master is inviting them to come and the house was full. This, well, this is an interesting story. You see, Jesus at this dinner at the Pharisee's house had already had talked to them about a couple of problems that he noticed. He noticed that when people were coming in, of course, Jesus was there and with the, uh, the leader of the Pharisees and people were filing in and uh, they were looking for the best seats, seats of honor. That, so they were jostling for recognition. They were, lost, they were very prideful. And so Jesus tells them, we need to be humble. Take the last seat, not the first seat, and the like. So he, he rebukes them. Then there's another thing that happens. When Jesus is there, uh, he's noticing all kinds of things. People are there for various reasons. Some are there because of uh, Jesus' prestige of being a miracle worker. Some are there just to honor their Pharisee friend. But some were there uh, just for the meal. Some wanted prestige, wanted recognition, and the like. So Jesus has rebuked the people twice already. Then he rebukes them with his third parable. Now he just doesn't point a finger, a, but he tells the parable hoping that they'll get it and understand. Well, what does the parable mean? The parable meant in Jesus' time that the people of God, the Jews, who were, had their, the original invitation to be his people, to come to his eternity, to have a relationship with him, to have that great banquet. And by the way, often in Jewish culture, a banquet uh, was the kind of the significance of bliss, of eternal blessing. And so they had a relationship with God, the nation. But they were rejecting Jesus. He was the servant who had come and said, Now enter the kingdom of God. Be my followers. Know your heavenly Father. Know the Master. But as you may well know, the Jewish nation rejected Jesus. They would not receive him as Messiah. Instead, they rejected and crucified him. Away with him! Crucify him! was their cry. So they rejected the relationship of God through Jesus Christ. They rejected the invitation to enter through the kingdom of God. But what does the rest of the parable mean? Go to the highways and hedges and byways. What that means is that the invitation from God to his eternal life, to the great banquet to come, in fact in the Bible it's called the marriage supper of the Lamb, go tell all the people. That would mean all the strangers and foreigners and non-Jews, what we call, in those days were called Gentiles. You see, they thought there was Jews and Gentiles that completed the whole world. The Jews had rejected, and now the Master tells us, go to all of the world, to all of the people, and bring them in my house. Bring them into my heaven. Bring them into my eternity. Bring them into my relationship. And so Jesus tells the parable, and that was the meaning then, that the gospel and the kingdom invitation to be with God forever in his eternity now goes out to the entire world. But it's been 2,000 years since Jesus told this parable. So what does it mean for us today? Pardon me. The point of the parable today is this. The kingdom of heaven is still there. The invitation to be in relationship with God when the final banquet comes is still there. 
And now what is happening, we are giving the invitation. We're the servant. I am like the servant of the master, giving an invitation for people to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, to prepare to be a ready for the eternal banquet. I don't know when the banquet's gonna come. The servant didn't know either in the, in the parable of the great banquet. He didn't know, but he knew that it was coming. So he gave that first invitation, and then there would be the actual time the banquet happened. So we're giving an invitation. I and all the gospel preachers, the people who live a Christian life, the social media invitations, the paper invitations, the witnessing direct invitations, this invitation through the internet. We're giving an invitation to all to be followers of Jesus Christ because that is the doorway. That is the invitation. That is the opening to the kingdom of God. You must be born again to see the kingdom of God. Come and follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. So while the parable has a great application in that time, it has a great application in our time. There is yet a great banquet to come. As I mentioned earlier, the great marriage supper of the Lamb. And our Lord is inviting all to come to his eternity, to that great banquet, through our Lord Jesus Christ. So friends, hear the invitation. Come and follow the Lord. Come and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Come and make Jesus Christ your Lord. And if you will consider that today, pray this prayer with me, would you? Take a moment, think about it. Will you accept the invitation? You can do it by praying this prayer, the invitation to eternal life and relationship with God. Pray this prayer. Dear Father, I believe in your Son, Jesus Christ. I will be a follower of Jesus Christ. I believe he died for me. I believe he was resurrected. I believe he's coming again. Lord, I put all of my trust in you for eternal life. Amen. Now, if you've prayed this prayer, and if you've sought, you're going to be a follower of Jesus Christ, would you contact us on Facebook or some methodology? That would be Agape Church, Fresno, California so that we might know and we can help you grow in your relationship, in your friendship, in your invitation to the Lord, walking with Him. Thank you for tuning in. God bless you, Agape Church, and those who are watching around the world. Receive the invitation to go to the great banquet of God in eternity. God bless. Amen.